Yes. He was with God in the yes. beginning. And I agree. That. Through him, all things were made. But right. So yeah. before all things were made, what was there? Where do you get before all things? It literally says there. In the so what you're saying is they would have immediately saw the parallels and went, "This must be about creation." Then. Well, yeah. Because that's such a terrible argument. Don't you, don't you see that as being? You're sorry. basically saying this looks like this, therefore it's this. Yeah. I believe. What about Irenaeus? I believe Jesus is divine. You think he's God? No, I believe he's divine. Well, okay, so it's, it's not divine then. Look, if, if you are one with the, the divine essence, you are divine. But, it, but you're saying there was a word and it was God. Um, no, in the beginning there uh, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was a God. Yep. So you're saying there's two gods. So <laughs> we were talking earlier. Uh, I gave you a bit sort of my testimony about how I became a Christian. Yeah. You mentioned this is your first time at the park. Yeah. And you also mentioned that you don't hold to Trinitarian doctrine and that you don't think that God is a, is a triune God. Do you want to just sort of talk about that? Just talk about why you believe that? Yeah, so like, it's good to do with the way I was raised. I was, with the way I was raised, I was raised as a Unitarian beliefs. I believe in okay. Jesus' pre-existence. But it's just okay, like, yeah. as I got, so I got baptised when I was about 16, 17 years old. So when um, I looked into the Bible more and looked at the scriptures, it kind of confirmed... Oh, you want to chime? Oh, it yeah. just confirmed the stuff I believed. I looked yeah. into Trinitarianism a lot, I looked into many other things, just because I, I did a lot of evangelising when I was young, I still do. So I used to speak to lots of Trinitarians and other people on the page, Muslims and many other people. Okay. So I'm used to hearing like the arguments and the reasons why they believe it. Yeah. And yeah, just studying the Bible and looking at what the Bible states, it confirms me that um, God is one. And that obviously you believe right. the same thing. But right. one, one person, one being. Okay. Um, is there any particular scripture that you think that is, 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 is telling that God is uh, not three persons, he's not triune? I wouldn't say there's, there's a scripture that says there's not three, three persons. No, right, you're right, that's, there is yeah. no scripture, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> But there's one, one at like first Corinthians 8 verse 6, I'm sure. Oh, okay, interesting, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, uh, Should we get it out? Yeah, let's go for Let's it. get it out. So it's always good to, to go through scripture. So, 1 Corinthians 8 verse 6. I'm one of these uh, modern Christians who has the Bible on their phone. Yeah, same with me. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to speak to people with it in your hand, but it's just so much more convenient. Right, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so this is Vestas. Yeah, for us, uh, this is Niv, by the way, uh, new international version. Okay, yeah. yeah, for us, there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. Do you understand the, the difficulty with that? Like, if you, if you want to assert that there is one God, and it is the Father, I assume, yeah. in your view, but in this verse that you've, you've uh, brought up, it says that through whom all things live in regards to the Father, but in the very next sentence it says, Jesus Christ through whom all things came. So he's equating them. You know, what's actually interesting is we actually know from a scholarly point of view that this verse in the actual Greek is a, is a reference to the, the Shema, the Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Are you familiar with that verse? I am, yeah. So I, would, I wouldn't say that it's based in the Greek it is. I mean, I say based in the Greek, it, it says what it says. Was, it, would you say that that verse there, when it says Jesus Lord, that is equating him to the Lord of the Old Testament? So wait, wait. wait. That, that, that's not what I'm getting at here. What I'm getting at here is it says, the Father from whom all things came, yeah. yep, and for whom we live, and there is one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things came. Yeah. He's equating them. So, you see, uh, are you, are you, so you're talking about creation, like who things are created by? Us. Right, yeah. So, so, so all things came through the Father, yes. Mm. Ultimately, he is the final cause. He is the creator of all the universe, yep. He just said that about the Father and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. Also, when we talk about the, even the term Lord, is the Father Lord? Uh, the Father is Lord, yeah. In, in right. A, I would say in a different sense. In a different Lord, sense. Yeah. Okay, but you can see quite here is equating them. He doesn't stop to say, oh, but in a different way. Well, I, would, he, I wouldn't say he's trying to equate them. I think what, the, what, what he's doing, he's, yep. ide he's making two identifications. He's ide identifying yep. the Father as, as yep. the God, as yep. the one God. Okay. He's, he's yep. identifying Jesus Christ as the one Lord. Obviously, yep. he goes on to explain the Father is one from whom all things are. Like, he's a source, yep. he's the originator of yep. creation. Yep. And Jesus is the one through whom all things are. Like right. John 1 verse 3 or Christians 1 verse 16, where it says yep. things were created through Jesus Christ. Yep. So in my all belief, things were created through Yeah, him. all things. So in my okay. belief system, mm -hmm. all things were created through Jesus Christ. In my belief system, he pre-existed. Okay. 
he, he was he was a helper in creation. It's the person that God the Father, who is the one God as it identifies, right. creates the world through Jesus Christ. Okay. So it's the one God creation through Jesus. Okay, but, but in the first Colossians 16 that you mentioned, it doesn't say that through whom all other things came, mm. but rather it says through whom all things came. Mm. So in other words, if Jesus is a created entity, although pre-existent as you think, yeah. then how could Jesus be involved in the creation of all things? He couldn't have been. So I would say that's down to the way the Bible uses language. So when like, when it, the Bible uses definite phrases, when it says like all things, based on the context, it doesn't literally have to mean all things. So if you... And in Greek, it is all things, right? Yeah, in yeah, fact, yeah. You, if you look at, for example, the Jehovah's Witness Bible, yeah. they actually add in brackets in their, oh, yeah. um, in their lexicon, N the N word N other. NWC, yeah, New World Translation. Yeah. Um, if you go to Hebrews 2 verse 7, so I'll give you an example. Okay, all it. things in the Bible doesn't have to mean all things. It's based, it's limited to the context. It's context Right, context. but the context specifically of Colossians is all things. It's yeah, quite yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, it, it literally says, and no other thing that was created was created. That's perfect. So, yeah, right. John, John, uh, well, that's John 1, verse 3, says it. Uh, 1, 16. But, yeah, if you go to Hebrews 2, verse 7. Uh, yep, I have got a uh, 6, uh, 7, yep. So it says, you made him, talking, this is talking about mankind. Yeah. You made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and put everything on his feet. Okay. And, and putting everything under him, God left nothing that is not subject to him. Yet at present we do not see all things subject to him. So the word there, the Greek there, word there for everything. If you go, if you go to a, like a different translation, it will say all things, and it's in a change, in exchange for other um, like John one verse three. It's, it's the term there can be translated all things or everything. Mm. So if you go to like the King James or the ESV or any other, it will be a different word. Be, be well, I'll, I'll grant that maybe, maybe that is. But yeah. what I'm saying is, I think Colossians quite clear. Let's go to Colossians. I think Colossians is clear, specifically in itself that there is no other things. For in him all things were created. Yeah. Things in heaven and on earth, yeah. visible and invisible. Yeah. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Yeah. So, well, but that means that he himself can't be created. Uh, let me show you, okay, okay. same thing according to Hebrews 2 verse 8. Why? I'll explain, I didn't really explain before, I'll explain why. So look, um, the, let's go to the, the King James Version. Okay, sure. Uh, so that has put all things in subjugation, subjection, sorry, under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Yeah, so it's talking about all things. So God uh, and the, all the translations say more or less the same thing. God put in subject all things under mankind, and by putting all things under, under subjection to mankind, mm. He left nothing that is not in subjection to Him. But that wouldn't mean that God is included in that, or the angels. Would you say that angels are in subjection to man, or God is in subjection to man? Because it says all things are put mm. under Him, and mm. God left nothing mm. not subject to man. Mm. So if all things means all things there, then it would include uh, God and the angels. But of course we know that can't be, that's not true. Because again, it's context specific, and the context of what it's speaking about is creation. Creation in Genesis 1 verse 1, which is the creation of the heavens and the earth. Oh. And, and that's what I suggest. So all, first of all, all things just mean all things, as I, I was saying. It doesn't have to mean all well, things. Well, no, no. What you've, what you've demonstrated is that there are contexts in which it doesn't necessarily yeah, mean context that. Specific. But I think Colossians is quite so clear. So let's go to Colossians 1 verse 16. Okay, let's do that, yeah. Uh, there we go. So it says the uh, for in him were created the things in the heaven and the things in the earth. So it's talking about the creation of the heavens and the earth. Would you agree? Yeah, as it, yeah, as yeah. It says. Yep. So in Genesis one verse one, it, it talks about the creation of the heavens and the earth. Yeah. The creation of the heavens and the earth isn't about the creation of literally all things. It's about the creation of the our heavens and our earth. The creation of the heavens and the earth. Well, no. The, the expression created heavens and the earth. If you talk about the heavens and the earth, you are talking about all of creation. Not like in, in, in how it will be understood in this context. It depends. Well, but it says here, like visible and invisible. Yeah. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, he's being pretty excessive here. He's not just saying, oh, yes, you know, uh, most things. No, he's saying literally everything that you could think of. All things have been created through him and for him. Yeah. So if Jesus was created, how, how can he have been created through himself? Again, like I was saying, all, th all things in the Bible uh, doesn't literally all mean things. But, but, but in this verse, in this context, that's what it means. Yeah, I would say again. Okay, I, I don't so, think we're going to agree on the, that the, one. The, again, <laughs> yeah. so I know you, when, when it says it, uh, the things invisible and the, the things not invisible, I right. would suggest it's talking about the, the, the earth and the heavens. Whether it's I think it's talking about all creation. I mean, yeah. it says, for in, him were all uh, for in him all things were created. 
Yeah, yeah. All things. Yeah, but that's, con that's context specific of what? Of Genesis 1. Of heaven 1. and earth, which is all of created order. Okay, so in Job 38, verse 7, it says like the angel, for example, they shouted the applause in the creation of the, of the, of the heavens and the earth. It, it says it, or the creation of the earth. It says they shouted the applause. So they were there prior to that, that, that event even happening. So, Genesis, if, if, Genesis, if the angels applauded at the creation of the heavens and earth, in Genesis 1 verse 1, that means they must have existed prior to that event. So that's what, what I'm saying. What does it necessarily entail though? I don't think it does. Well, you can go to it. But well, if someone does something and then there's a response, that doesn't it necessitate well, if, the response they, came before the if, event. If they witnessed it, it says that they were there. It says they were there. We can go to it. Right, well, what I want to go to actually is, if you, if you just wouldn't mind, I'm going to go to a particular verse in John, and I want you to read this if you would not mind. Uh, I want you to go to John chapter 12, verse 37. And we're going to read down to 41. I've got it here, but you can get it up if you want, in whatever version you it's want. It's easier. Sure. John 12, 37. Yeah, 37, yeah. You all right if I read it? Yeah, go for it. All right. <clears throat> Even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. Sorry, sorry. John 12, 37. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John 12, 37. John chapter 12, verse 37. Okay. Yep. Even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet. Lord, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason, they could not believe, because as, as Isaiah says elsewhere, so he's quoting Isaiah now, they have blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, so they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor, t nor turn, and I would heal them. Now, he's quoting Isaiah 6 there. Yeah. Do you know what Isaiah 6 is? I do, I'm familiar with, yeah, I'm pretty familiar with it. It's it, talking about where, I, well, Isaiah 6 verse 11, is, it speaks about Jesus specifically. But prior to this, right. it's about God, seeing God in his heavenly throne and stuff like that. It's talking about Yahweh? Yeah. And it talks about how Isaiah had a vision of Yahweh and it describes Yahweh. So let's read 41, the next verse in John chapter 12, verse 41. Yep. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. John just said it was Jesus. No, it, see, I, I wouldn't say that's necessarily true. It was, Wait, what? It just says it there. He doesn't. He doesn't say it there. It does. It just literally just said it there. I, literally, just verse forty-one. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. But in this in this context, he, he had to quote from two different texts. He quotes Isaiah six. Mm. But he also quotes from Isaiah verse fifty-three. So in Isaiah fifty-three. Mm. Uh, but he's talking in verse forty-one. He's talking about a vision. He saw something. In verse, in, sorry, say again. in 41, Isaiah saw something. He saw something. Yeah, yeah. So, Jesus' glory and spoke yeah, about so, him. Again, so he's, when he, when he, so in the previous verse, so again, so the word, the word of Isaiah, the prophet might be called, who said, Jehovah has put, who has put his faith in him and who has heard from us. And as for the arm of Jehovah, to whom has it been revealed? The reason why they were not able to believe is that, again, Isaiah said, he has blinded the eyes so that they made their hearts hard. They would not see their eyes and understand their hearts and turn and heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke about him. Yeah. But when it's speaking about the, when it's speaking about these passages, he's not saying oh, when the, like um, Isaiah six verse one. I'm literally I'm specifically referencing this this, this specific chapter. But he is specifically referencing it. No, Those come again, from that chapter. He, he, he referenced two chapters there. He referenced Isaiah fifty verse fifty three. And he says here because Isaiah this is elsewise. Says, this is from uh, Isaiah six. The last the, the very thing he quotes right on the very first uh, the verse before is that verse. Should we go to it? Uh, we can, yeah. You can go you, if you go to Isaiah six, and we, I go to Isaiah 50, 50, verse fifty-three. So again, I should just highlight again in verse forty-one. It says Isaiah said these things. So he's not saying referencing one thing. As I said before, he's, he's referencing two different chapters of, the, of Isaiah. He right. Says, yeah. Isaiah said these things. Um, as I said, these things because he saw his glory and spoke about him. So he's referencing Isaiah 50, verse 53, and he references Isaiah 6, verse 6. Right, but so now Isaiah 6 is right in the verse before, and then he says, he said these things because he saw Jesus' yeah, glory. Well, we obviously, I'm, I'm aware, obviously, he says it right before it, but again, he, said he, Isaiah, he didn't say Isaiah said this, referencing the verse he just said. Yeah, Isaiah spoke these things, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what, these, things. Says these things, what is right. Okay, so it's in, in verse to both verses, yeah? Exactly, yeah? Okay, but the one that literally is before is from Isaiah 6. Yeah. And he said, he spoke this because he saw Jesus' glory. 
Yeah. And he also saw... So but these uh, verses, the Jews would have understood about you, being are Yahweh. You, are you aware of what Isaiah 50 verse, uh, chapter 53 is, about the, the prophecy yeah. of Jesus Christ? Yeah. So obviously, that's talking that if you want to speak to a Jew and try and prove that Jesus is the Messiah, mm -hmm. that is the chapter of the Bible you go to, because it says the most prophecies... Yeah, yeah, it talks about... Yeah, that's the thing, yeah. So if we're, if we're talking about the, the Jesus being glorified, mm. that is where, in, re in reference to prophecy, he's being glorified exceedingly, because... He's got many things that are spoken about him, um, which is in, reveals that he is a Christ. And not only that, in Isaiah 52, obviously by the chapters and the numbers, they're, they're, they're insertions of the Bible. Not yeah, 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 they were there. So in Isaiah 52, verse, I think it's verse 11, in the, at least in the Septuagint version, so the LXX, it mentions that the fact that Isaiah saw Christ, I think it says the risen Christ, or at least he saw Christ, and that he was exceedingly glorified. So even in Isaiah 53, or the ver a couple of verses just pri previously, like Isaiah 52 verse 11 or 13, I think. Um, it's talking about Isaiah saw the glory of Jesus Christ. So right, right, yeah. still you're still you're trying to get away from the fact that Isaiah 6 specifically has this verse in, and then in the very next verse in John 12 41, he says Isaiah saw, uh, saw these things because he saw Jesus' glory. So, so he spoke these things because he saw Jesus' glory. Yeah. It's pretty clear. I, I mean, I would have to say you're, you're ignoring <laughs> the fact that he says these things, and that these things are in reference to multiple verses, multiple right? Verses. Right, but one no, of them is Isaiah 6. Yeah, you can't yeah. get out of that. And, so, and one is also Isaiah 50, verse 53. Right, I can affirm both, but I think that you're yeah. you can't affirm the, both. The difference is in Isaiah verse 52, uh, sorry, Isaiah verse 6, is it doesn't say that Isaiah saw Jesus, it says he saw Yahweh. And you assume that, that Jesus is that Yahweh. So that's that's the issue you have. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. Okay, yeah, but in, in John specifically said he saw his glory. Yeah. And he's referring in at least one of those two instances about Yahweh. Yeah. Right, so he saw Yahweh's yeah, no, glory, no, no. but so, he says it's no, Jesus. So, so he saw Yahweh's glory in Isaiah verse 6, and then in verse 11, that's the reference that he puts to him about Jesus Christ. No, no, he, because because he, in the literal right verse above, of, he's talking, but he quotes uh, Isaiah 6. And then in 1241, he says, Isaiah spoke these things because he saw Jesus' yeah, glory. You, we, we've both already acknowledged the fact that when he says these things, right. he's not referencing just the one. Right, right, right. But yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it being 53 as well. Yeah. But, just, but let's just take 6 as an example. Who was that originally about? Well, what the, glory has been spoken about the in verse, six? The, the verse that he's speaking about there isn't, again, the, the glory doesn't have to refer to a literal, the literal glory. But whose it, glory has been talked about? It, it, in the, the beginning of the chapter, he's speaking about Jehovah. Yahweh. Yeah, yeah, Yahweh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so why is he equating it? But that, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're assuming that he's equating it by just okay. applying the reference of Yahweh to Okay, so, so remember that this is the same book that has John's prologue, where he talks about the Word, in the beginning was the Word, yeah, the Word yeah. was with God, and the Word was God, yeah. right? First of all, uh, you need to give a defense about how that is because the word then becomes incarnate in flesh in the person of Jesus. You said, you said I didn't give a defense. Well, yeah, well, what I'm saying is, um, how do you explain uh, verse 1? One A, one B, one C. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Because yeah. that, and then that word later on in the chapter, I think in verse fourteen, becomes flesh. Yeah. So we can go into that. So, how, but how, so how do you understand the verse? In it's, it's, it's plain and basic reading. Well, there's, there's two different. There's Hello. Two, there's two different understandings yeah. of it, really, when it comes to like Trini the way Trinitarians understand. Do you understand that is uh, is an identification of Jesus being called God, or do you think? It's more it says that there's a word, mm -hmm. the word, that is distinct from God, but is God in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Then, and this is, and that's the Greek. That's the Greek forces you to adapt that position because it's written in such a very specific way, and that's why it reads, "In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and yeah. the word was God." Yeah, no. yeah. And then it becomes incarnate in the person of Jesus. Yeah, no, I understand that. But again, Trinitarians, they are, there's Trinity, Usually, when I speak to Trinitarians, they understand it in two different ways. There's two different ways they understand it usually. But they understand you have two understandings of it. You have a one understanding, but if I speak to you about it, you might have one understanding, and I speak to another Trinitarian, they have another understanding. Um, it doesn't usually deviate from one of them. Okay. So you, would you say that it's... Uh, when, uh, all the Trinitarians I've seen have always had that same understanding. So, let me explain it. So, when, you, when it says the word was God, would you see that as Jesus, uh, is identifying Jesus as God? He is yes. the God, or would you understand that? He is God. He, he is what it means to be God. He is fully what it means to be God. In the God. same way the Father is fully what it means to be God, because so, they both partake in the same divine so, essence. I mean, the issue is, because I still don't know which really version you understand. Um, well, what's the alternative? What, what's the other so, one? Again, the, the two differences is, right. is one's an identification, right. and one is qualifying so that the word as having the same nature as God. So, it, so one is called a, de a definite understanding or a qualitative understanding. So Jesus is either being called the God there, he is God, as in and, uh, he's identifying him as God, or it's more, oh, it's describing his nature as in he had the same nature as God. So I would say, which one would you understand it? I don't understand why you can't have both. 
because it's based on it's basing basing grammar. You can't have both because it's basing grammar. If one's an identification, it would obviously express. It would have certain connotations with it. Right, right. So, so I, I would say the verse. I mean, we could read it up. It is clear that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So that's identifying and saying it was God, right? But then to say that does that mean that they share in the same nature? Yeah, I think you can affirm both. Okay, so I'll go based based on the fact that you're saying that he was God. So okay, the, the issue I would see there is the fact that if Jesus is God there, then yeah. God, so oh, there we go. in the beginning was the word, and the word was was with God, and the word was God. Okay. So if Jesus was God, that he if he's been called, so obviously that first God there yeah. is the God in Greek, Hothios, uh, Hothion or Hothios. Yeah. Is identify is a identification. He is the God. Sure. So if verse C is um, the same, if it's also definite, based on one's interpretation of, of, of the Greek language and stuff like that, or context, then if it's identifying him as that God, then Jesus is the same God that he was with. Because in as a Trinitarian, to a Trinitarian, who is God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Exactly. Jesus isn't God by himself. No, he is fully God he, himself. He, he, as in regards to his nature, right? But he's yeah. not, you wouldn't say... If I, like I said, I said, who's God? You said the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm. So if I, if, I, if I came to a Trinitarian and yep. I said, Jesus is God, left it as that, you're like, hold on, hold on. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are God, because that's an identification of No, no, no you can say either one. If you said to me, the Holy Spirit is God, I'd be like, yep. Yeah, the Father is God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, the, on the basic level, on the yeah. fundamental level. Yeah, yeah. And then if we wanted to elaborate, we would say that the Father, Son, Holy Spirit are all gods. Yeah, yeah. but they're, they're God in nature, not in identity. So well, yeah, they are distinct from each other. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yeah. So the one God... But they are inseparable and indivisible. Yeah, obviously, yeah, based on the Trinitarian, Trinitarian understanding. Well, but, Scripture but, forces us to have that opinion. But, but, um, yeah. The one God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus isn't the identity of the one God, He, but He has a nature of that one God. The Father has well, a in a Trinitarian view, yeah. Or, uh, God is the divine essence of which the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit all equally share. Yeah, yeah. They are they are consubstantial with that divine essence. Yeah. But the identity of the one God is the three persons, right? Uh, yeah, in the sense that if you say God, you are inexplicitly saying Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's what we've got. But to you can make a distinction between the divine essence and the hypostasis. But yeah, but that, you're, you're, that would, if you did that, you'd be speaking in regards to his nature. His okay, essence and his well, nature. what's wrong with that? I'm not, I'm not saying anything's wrong with it. I'm, okay. just, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it so we can speak about John 1. Okay, 1. sure. So if, if you're trying to say that Jesus is the God according to John 1, verse 1, the verse is being very clear that Jesus, the word was with the God. So if therefore Jesus is also the God, is speaking about him in identity, he is the God that he is with. And that's why many Trinitarians say, so basically, most of the modern scholars community of Trinitarians, they would say... It's which is the dominant view, yeah? Yeah, which yeah. is the dominant, or at least in the scholar community. It's more, yeah. people are more leaning that way. Like, it, lots of people who I speak to who are quite learned about the matter, they would say it's qualitative, it's not speaking about Jesus and identity. That's why I was trying to ask you before, how do you understand it? Okay, I don't, I don't understand the significance of that. What's the significance well, of the that? The significance of it is, again, so Trinitarians themselves would say this, I could bring up uh, quotes after this, but Trinitarians would say, if you call Jesus God according to John 1 verse 1 C, in regards to his identity, if it's identifying him as God, as the God, then it is inferring that he is the same God that he is with. And that's why they adopt for more of a qualitative understanding of John 1 verse 1 C these okay, days, sure. and say it's in regards to his nature. Sure, okay. So, I would say that it, that is, that leans more to how I would understand that. It's, it is qualitative in a sense, but I would say that it was, like the New World Translation that you mentioned before, the Jehovah's Witnesses, when it says that Jesus is a God, yeah. or Jesus is divine, I would yeah. say that is, that those are correct, trend, that the best of translations. No, no, or, no, absolutely not, or, because, wait, wait, no, because that's inconsistent, because you're talking about the indefinite article, mm. but but if you were consistent, there are other places in that same chapter where you would have to replace it with a God. Not necessarily, because it's... No, no, because if, if you base the same uh, principle of, in the Greek, the the uh, missing indefinite article, you would then have to go through every other place where it says God and say there's not one there, so add one there. So no, it's, all of a sudden, it's, I understand what you're saying, but it's yeah. not simply based on Greek grammar, it's also based on the context. So the other examples where you... Well, might, what is the context? I mean, the context is like, it's literally the start of the book. Well, I would say the context is the fact that if Jesus is with the God, mm -hmm. the God in the Bible, as you said, I said, who is God? Mm -hmm. Who is God? And you said the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So if Jesus is with God, yeah. then it, he can't be that God because he, that would be right. well, that would mean he'll be he'll be with himself because the God in the Bible is according to Trinitarian the Father Son and the Holy Spirit right. so if he's with him yeah. then he can't be with that one because that, that would mean he'll be with himself or he's with 
the entity of the, the being is with of the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But Jesus, he, Jesus can't be with the, with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, he is the Son. Yeah, he is the right, Son, but right. he can't be with himself. What? That's like saying you can't be with yourself. I can't be with myself because I'm I am me. Yeah, so you're always with yourself. So it, like you can't be if you're with yourself in first that like you you're somebody separate from yourself. You're with them. So let's imagine if you've got three bottles of water mm. over here, mm. yeah, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. If the word, let's imagine I'm holding another, bo another bottle of water on my phone. So if I say the word is with the word, the word is here. So you can't be with him because that would infer there's four persons, but there's only three. So it can't. It, it, it doesn't make sense whatsoever. I, I think you're looking at weird sort of logistic ways of trying to get out of this. I think that's basic, basic fundamentals of maths. Like if somebody is with somebody, then they can't be that person. Because Again, well, there's a principle that you can have things that are distinct but not separable. There's, there's, you not right? there's not many Trinitarians who say that their God in, in John 1 verse 1 is the initial, the first one, and John 1 verse B is, is the Trinity. They would say that's the Father. I'm technically helping you. They would say that's the Father. There. But it doesn't say the Father, it says right. God. So again, that's what it does make sense. And that's why I would say that the best translation would be a God, because it's making a distinction. I, right. I, I don't understand why this is substantial or, or, or significant. It just seems like semantic. Dodging. It's not. Because it, well, the verse clearly says there is something called the Word, and it was with God, and it also is God, and then it became incarnate. Mm. The, I don't. It, unless you're doing but like backflips logistically. This is the thing, but that would require you to assume that your translation of it is correct. Like I could come to. I could have, most most scholars. I, most scholars, by overwhelming amount, believe that is a correct yeah, translation. The, the issue is that most scholars, the most Trinitarian scholars, say that's the name. Yeah, and that's that's precisely why, because when they translate it, they go, "Oh, obviously that's." But there divine are, there are numerous, there are numerous scholars mm. who aren't Trinitarian, and there's numerous scholars who are Trinitarian as well. The majority are Trinitarians, yeah, precisely yeah. because that's what it says. Yeah, but there's numerous scholars who are Trinitarian who say a God mm. or the word. Yeah, was but I want to explain. Is a, is a, is They're a, not being consistent with that translation. Also, it, it introduces a whole with it. Are you saying there's now two gods? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say there's two gods in but the it, sense. But you're saying there was a word and it was God. Um, no, no, in the beginning there uh, was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was a God. Yeah. So you're saying there's two gods. You're saying it was with God, but yeah. it is a god. And that's what, and that's what the, I believe John is making a distinction. So the Bible does speak of other the other gods. For example, in for the first right, book. right, but not in an actual sense that affirms the truth of them. Right? It, the Bible yeah, doesn't say there are other gods that are also true gods. Well, they're, they're lesser gods or false gods. Well, exactly. Yeah, that's right. They're, they're, they're exactly, not like gods. You said, yeah. Lesser gods, and that's, that's, that's what I'd hold to. Right. Call Jesus that but that, that's an god. equation, though. It's saying there was a there was God in the beginning, and there was also a God who was with him. Yeah. So you from from all eternity past before creation, you have God, and then this other God. Where do you get eternity past in John one verse one? Because in the beginning. Yeah, and the, in the what, what, what is in the beginning of mimic, mimicking Genesis one verse one in the beginning. Right. It's again the beginning of all things. No, no, it doesn't say all things. It's the beginning of the creation of the heavens and the earth. It's the creation of the heavens and the earth. It doesn't say all things. The creation of the heavens and the earth. And that's what I alluded to John, Job eight thirty eight verse seven before. Yeah. With the angels, they witnessed the creation of the earth. They wait, wait, it says here. Through him, all things were made. Yeah, but again, that's so it. that's not but that's not creation, then, is it? This, this is what I said to you before. Yeah. So, so there was a word, yes, that was some way God, and that all so things what, were made through him. This? this is John one verse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So again, in the beginning, but this is it's context specific to the beginning, to Genesis one verse one. Wait, wait, but no, it says here in the literally uh, one two, he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Yeah, the beginning of Genesis one verse one. The beginning no, no. Of so this is heavens. describing what was before creation, and then saying through what was there, the word which was with God and was God, this, this is, has created... Yeah. It's not saying creation's already happened and now there's a word. This verse, yeah. to a Jew, this verse is written to the Jews. Jew, the, the first Christians were Jews. The John is writing to the Jew, Jewish Christians. They would not understand the, the, in, the beginning to be anything else other than Genesis. Wait, wait, you know one. that the early church understood it this way? That's, you, not, you got, that's not true. That's really? Not true. Okay, yeah. so Polycarp. Let's yeah. look at the disciples of John who wrote this. Yeah. Polycarp, what did he believe? He, he, did, he in none of his writings did he... He thought that Jesus was divine. Yeah, I believe. What Jesus about Irenaeus? I believe Jesus is divine. You think he's God? No, I believe he's divine. What? Okay, so he's, he's not divine then. Look, if if you are one with the the divine essence, you are divine. So so it, is Jesus part of that divine essence? He, I wouldn't say he's part of the divine essence as in God's, God's being. Hold on, two seconds. So you just said being divine makes you God, right? In this sense, in the sense I'm using it, yes, right. Well, in because what I'm sense are you using it? I'm saying that you partake in the divine essence. But th that's what the verse doesn't say. He partakes. Right. In the divine it essence. says here. Okay. So before creation, all creation, what was there? Uh, in whatever that creation. state, whatever the state was, right? Oh, before, so before the 
So yes. my, my understanding of, 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 of it would be that God was alone, the Father was alone, okay, and this okay. was many okay. of and, and, and everything that was there was partaking in the divine essence? No, I, would, I don't no. know where you're guessing that from. Where you guessing okay, that from? Well, okay, so what, because now you're saying that there are things other than God that exist before all creation. No, 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 I'm saying, again, I, try, I tried to explain it. The Father was alone, God was alone. So right. One God was alone. Okay, no, even if you just say that one God was the divine essence or were taking the divine essence, yep. you, you have just that. What I'm saying is, is it clearly then saying there was something else called the Word? No, 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 because where, 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 when it, where is it saying this is before all creation, all things? Again, it says here, he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. How does, how does Genesis 1 verse 1 say, open up? Why are you comparing it to Genesis? There's no reason to do that. Because yeah. uh, there is there, uh, perfect reasons to do it. Because, yeah. again, Genesis, op Genesis opens up in the beginning, right? Right. So th that's in reference to So what? now we need to do the same on, here and think it's no, about no, creation. No, 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 hold on. Right. It says in the beginning, right. in Genesis 1 verse 1. That's okay. about the creation of the heavens and the earth. Okay. This opens up in exactly exactly the same way and there's numerous scholars again trinitarian scholars who will say john was he john was referencing genesis 1 verse 1 here to a to a to a jewish person with when you if you went up to a jewish person not today you could do it today but uh, back, back in jesus day and you said the big in the beginning what is that what would they think of well it depends on the context no what would they what would they think no but <laughs> read the context what would a jewish person in jesus day no no, no, no you see you're, you're avoiding the th I'm what not, i'm saying no, we can speak about yeah, but, yeah, but, so address verse two i, I will but I, i'm asking you but that's verse. that's telling you the answer to yeah, what you're asking I, 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 no it's not and i'll explain why if you just answer it to a jewish person back in, in jesus okay day, okay i'm just gonna say i don't know you wouldn't know. so if you said to a Jew, they they are they okay. read the Torah, they, they believe in Genesis okay. one, right, right. Genesis one. Right. So it's in the in the. So beginning. what you're saying is they would have immediately saw the parallels and went, this must be about creation. Then. Well, yeah. Because That's such a terrible argument. They they see that as being. I'm you're sorry. basically saying this looks like this, therefore it's this. I'm sorry, I, I'm on, not man. saying this. I, yeah. I said to you before. No, there no are, scholar. Uh, there are majority of. Yeah. I can, I can bring it up right uh, I'm now. I'm sure there are scholars, right? Now. What I'm saying is most scholars don't, right? The early church fathers. That's true. Most most scholars are trinitarian. No, no. Most scholars do you understand? John 1 verse 1 to right. be a reference to Genesis 1 verse 1. I've looked well, right, in the style of writing, as in like, hey, no, look, it's basically... As basic. in referencing that. Right, it's, yeah, but it's saying, it's talking about the, how creation came about. <laughs> yes. He was with God in the yes. beginning. And I agree with Through that. him all things that. were made. But right, listen, so before all things were made, what was there? Where do you get before all things? It literally says there. He was with no, God in the says, beginning, through him all no, no, things no, no. were made. He, with, says, he says he was in the beginning. He yeah, 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 beginning. before what? Before what? What do you mean before what? Read, uh, what was it? Through him, it, all things no, were made. Without no, him, no, nothing so it, was made. No, no, it, it says, in the beginning it was a word. And it, then it referenced in all things being made through him. And I ah, right then. Yeah. So so there, there you know that there was God, right? Before yeah. all things were made. And with God was the word. No, the way I understand That's it. That's literally the, uh, the way the I understand word it. Is, do you, look, in Genesis 1 verse 1, uh, yeah. through Genesis 1 26, he says, let us make man in our image. Right. He was speaking to Jesus there. Most okay. Trinitarians say the same thing. Right. Let us make man in our image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus yeah, yeah. So when I said, when in who was he speaking to there? Sorry? Who would you think he was speaking Jesus to Jesus Christ. He was speaking to Jesus. Uh, as I said, so my understanding of it, or as I was just about to explain this, the Father was alone. Okay. He, I believe Jesus is a creation of God. Um, obviously, that's why I don't believe in Trinity. He's a creation of God. But this and then, obviously and says... And then God made all things through Okay, do you not know find it really suspicious that there are, there are um, Arianists who, who basically add things to text, like the Jehovah's Witnesses adding letters to the text? They're, they're in, their, in their first Colossians 16, they literally add the word other in their own lexicon. Because they know full well that word's not there. In Colossians 1 verse 16, yeah, they add it in, but it's... Mate, like, does that bother you? Like, no, 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 hop, no, no. they're but adding it, to the text. It, it, yeah. it, you don't need that, that word other. No, no, because then otherwise it says th um, all things were made, no, again, not all other things. Again, no, no, yeah. it doesn't matter. It, the, the other doesn't need to be in there for it to not infer that all, all, things. all, all things doesn't mean all. It's context specific. So, for example... But he goes on and on about invisible and invisible and thrones and so, dominions right, and powers it says, and... In regards to Jesus, I can't remember the specific passage, but it says that all the people in Jerusalem and Judea came that came out to him to hear him speak. Yes, yeah, so, I, 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 I totally get there are other, other areas of the Bible where you can say all and not actually mean all. Yeah. But in a verse that goes on length after length saying, look, I'm including all of these things, all of these things. It would seem to indicate that the author's actually trying to get the idea that it's no, all things. Again, no, because Colossians 1 verse 16, again, it references the heavens and the earth. That's why it's in Right, the created order. Yeah, to Genesis 1 verse 1, the creation of the heavens. Right, right, right. so yeah. all of the creation, right, came through him. And nothing came that was not through him. Yeah. Right, so Jesus must have been no, an uncreated okay, entity that did it. When it says that he created all things, yeah. all things were made, does that include the Father or, or the Holy Spirit? No, it includes all the created order. It, exactly, because it's considered... Right, okay. so when Jesus it, isn't in the created order then. Or two, six, when it says that God subjected all things to Jesus Christ, right. does that include the Father? 
exactly. No, it's specifically about Jesus Christ. Exactly. When, yeah, it says, yeah, yeah. when it says specifically but, Jesus Christ, yeah, it means no, Jesus Christ. No, no. It, says, it says all things, that the God subject to all things under Jesus Christ. Mm. Does that mean the Father is subject to Jesus Christ? No. No, but it doesn't say that the Father is not subject to him. And, and it, like if you go to... Right, he, but, but in the context, two. it's clear about what this is. It, it specifically says a created order, the heavens and the earth. Yeah, it's... Exactly. It doesn't talk about the Father, it doesn't talk about the Holy Spirit, it yeah. just says the created order. Yeah. And I would hold that when it's referencing the, mm. the like Colossians one verse, six, each time it says that things were made through Jesus Christ. Mm. Colossians one verse sixteen, mm. it, meant, it references the heavens and the earth. Mm. In the created order, yeah. yeah. In, in, Which in, Jesus says in the part of. In in Hebrews one verse ten, when it says that Jesus Christ laid the heavens, uh, laid that created the heavens and the earth again in Genesis one, uh, Hebrews one verse ten. Again, it says in in in. Hebrews 1 verse 2, 1 and 2, that God made the things through Jesus Christ. And again, in John 1 verse 1 and verse 3, mm. it's talking about in the beginning, it's referencing the heavens and the earth. I, That's, I think it's so. referencing Genesis I'll, 1 I'll verse tell you what, I think we're probably at an impasse here where we've gone through quite a lot and I don't think we're going to get much anyway. So how about you have a, you have a minute or two just to summarize what you say. You can look at the camera if you want or whatever, or just look at me. And then afterwards... Be so I wouldn't, there's no need to. But. Oh yeah, oh, good point. Yeah, yeah, good point. Um, so. If you want to do that, and then I'll just summarise my point, and we'll shake hands and leave it at that. That's cool, Chris. Um, yeah. So obviously we talk, talk about. But I'll, I'll reference. And I'll speak about what we said. We just mentioned. Um, yeah, I wouldn't see uh, the the verses like John one verse three or Colossians one verse sixteen as saying Jesus is the creator that he's got in, in, in any type of way, because. Um, it's referenced in Gen Genesis 1 verse 1. In each, like, We're just about to wrap up, but yeah, yeah. In Colossians 1 verse 16, it references the heavens and the earth. Mm. And Genesis uh, John 1 verse 1 is talking about in the beginning. To a Jew, a Jewish person wouldn't understand the beginning to mean anything else other than what they've been told according to the Bible or the Torah, which is Genesis 1 verse 1. We wouldn't understand it as anything else. So we have to view what is said in John, John 1 verse 3 in light of that. So when it says all things were made through Jesus Christ, it's, it's just simply talking about the heavens and the earth. It's not talking about all things. Now, and that's not for me to say I don't believe that God made all things, like the universe, through Jesus Christ. But I'd say there's exclusions and stuff still. Like it goes to Hebrews 2, verse 7. It's very, and 2, verse 7 and 8. It's very um, extreme and definite in its language. It says that all things are subject to man, and God left nothing not subject to him. It's very definite, just as, de as definite as in John 1, verse 3. It wouldn't mean that God or the angels or anything else was. Ex um, subject under man other than what is spoken about in verse 7. Um, that's, okay. that's much I was saying. Cool. Say right, awesome. Um, so I think ultimately that John's prologue is clear. There is something that is God and yet distinct from God in verse 1-1. One, one. I think that in verse 1-3 one, it clearly says that this is talking about before all things were created because all things were created through him. This is clearly saying, therefore, that before the created order, there was a God and the word was uh, dis uh, distinct, but not inseparable from that God. This is the word that became incarnate in the person of Jesus Christ. I think the first, uh, sorry, Colossians um, 1, chapter six, uh, verse 16, clearly says that through him, all things were created, not all other things, as some Arianist scripture says. Oh, it's not scripture anyway, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a false doctrine and a false teaching. I think these are clear. I, I brought up John chapter 17, verse 37 to 41. I think that's clearly saying that from Isaiah 6, John is equating the Yahweh that's seen in that vision with the person of Jesus Christ. And uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Oh, can I say one thing about Isaiah 53? <laughs> you get, no, it's no. supposed to be a rapper. Let's yeah. give me the last one. <laughs> um, yeah, so in regards to Isaiah, the, the, what Chris said about John 12. Um, yeah, if you look at Isaiah verse 53, John is in Isaiah 12, He's referencing, referencing Isaiah verse 53 as well. And just prior to Isaiah verse 53 and Isaiah 52 verse, I think 11, 12, 13, it references Isaiah, Isaiah seeing the glory of Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to speak about the messianic uh, prophecies regarding him. So I wouldn't say that Isaiah 6 is necessarily what Isaiah saw, the seeing the glory is what it's in reference to in John 12. Um, but yeah, that's it. Chris? What's your name again? Uh, Kai. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, you understand that I don't think that you're a Christian is where you stand here, but uh, I pray that one day you'll have a change of mind. Yeah. I wish you all the best. Take care. Take care.